So, Paulo, just the first question, Ed kind of touched on it a little bit about uh, general philosophy from br bringing, kind of bringing everything back into the middle, making sure everything's kind of balanced as a balanced patch would. What was your philosophy going into this? A lot of it is just um, paying attention, like, what's going on with matches and then listening to the players. Like, a lot of people get frustrated and think that we're not, like, listening or watching the room, but we always are. It's just a matter of knowing when to do those changes. And we wanted to make sure that, like, the ESL Season 3 and EVO, we didn't do something too close to those. So we wanted to make sure the game sat for a while. We wanted to watch what people were doing and, may, and to keep up with the patterns we were seeing and things. And then going from there. And I will say, when we say that we watch the games, I've walked into your office many times, and he has, like, a... Six screen, Twitch, six cast of different Mortal Kombat, whatever yeah. Mortal Kombat streams are running. Yeah, Paul a lot of it's even looking at data. Like, anytime people are playing a game, there's data being collected on what's going on with matchups and stuff. Right. We just look at that raw data, too, because that's a lot of very informative. And then also just listening to the players directly. It's just, um, it's just a matter of filtering all that, all that information and figuring right. out where to go from there. And about every 20 minutes, I hear, Paulo, the ice clone! Like, I, I usually hear right. that, absolutely, yeah. So we, we're definitely looking at all that sort of stuff, you know, kind of pulling emotion out of it and just figuring out what's really best for the game. Yeah. Um, so let's, I guess, first discuss something that's kind of going to affect everybody. Uh, let's just discuss some uh, general gameplay changes. Um, so a lot of it is um, when, you, uh, when you start running, now it costs a little more for you to initially start running. So before it cost like 15 of your uh, energy top, bar at the top, where now it costs 25. Um, so just initially starting running will cost a little bit more of a bar. Um, another thing is if you get hit while you're running, it'll it'll eat up half of your energy. So if I'm running at him and he hits me, it'll eat up half of our energy. So a lot of times if you're trying to run and advance in and you get and you get punished or countered for it, um, you'll you'll end up taking some of your stamina away and it's gonna be longer before you can break. So that's good for like people who are trying to pressure you super hard. If you're able to read that and stop the pressure, yeah. you've put them at a pretty significant disadvantage. Yeah, and that also affects like um, like characters that rely off of run cancels, dash cancels, that'll bring them down a little bit too, where it would not affect your general overall gameplay. Okay. Steve? Yeah, it's, it's basically a way to make you think a little bit harder before you just run in and begin your offense. Just a little bit. Okay. Well, and that'll affect you know a character like Cassie, who uses run and a lot of her combos, and any character that has really, really good offense and uses run in their combos. You know? You'll be a little more careful. Right. And like Polo said, you, know, you have to use your resources to break. So if you start off running and you get hit and you need to break, it's longer you have to go before you can break. So it's just it adds a little bit more risk to running it. Gotcha. Excellent. Uh, moving on to some other, uh, we got some air attack changes. Yeah, so um, um, a lot of times when you do your jumping attacks, um, the area that you can be hit on, like your people call it the hurt box, that area actually gets bigger. Um, and, it's, and it's usually done that. But now it actually gets bigger one frame before your attack actually can hit. So a lot of times if somebody's going to read that you're jumping in and they go to attack you, they have a, they'll have a higher chance to, to, to succeed with their anti year if they time it correctly. Okay. Um, also, uh, there's a lot of down twos that have been... Uh, yeah, improved. in general we made sure that all the uppercuts were at least um, a consistent speed and, and, we, and we sped up some. Um, and also there were some um, hitbox adjustments on ones that we felt just didn't have the same amount of reach as other ones. Okay, excellent. Um, what else we got here? Uh, delayed wake-ups. Yeah, discuss the delayed wake-up. I just want to let Steve explain. The delayed wake up will no longer work if you're holding the block button. So this will make it easier to do like a wake up come loud teleport or a wake up move that uses down up because it will no longer get you confused. Yeah, if well, you're the block. same thing with um, trying to do a uh, enhanced move on wake up. If you're if you're sloppy with your inputs where you go down and block, and sometimes you'll you'll get a delayed wake up. So now if you're doing your inputs correctly, they'll they'll come out more consistently. I've seen, I've never had the problem because I'm not sloppy with my inputs. Yeah, I'm, I don't very, I'm very, You're perfect. Exact. When you think of Tyler Williams, you think clean, precise play. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Execution. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, there's been some changes in armor, which I guess some of the gifts we sent out mm -hmm. kind of touched on. So we want to talk about that. This is kind of a pretty interesting change. Yeah. Like overall, this it seemed like um, characters either had one armor, one armored move that was way better than the other move. So we generally try to make it where. Everybody's armor, uh, we wanted to sort of even the playing field a lot of them. So a lot of people that had armored moves that were like special moves that um, would start combos. So those, a lot of them either don't have armor or don't start combos anymore. The same thing with other moves which were, they had armor but they weren't really that useful, they just gave you some damage. Those a lot of, those will either have be more plus on block, do more damage, or some of them have two hits of armor now. Um, and, and that'll be covered in general patch notes and there was a good deal of those, but um, a lot of it was just making the armors more play on the same playing field. Okay. Uh, and just one, this is sort of a normal, it's been a normalization, a word we like to use, of moves that were extremely advantageous. Yeah, and some of it was just a lot of times you felt like your character was stuck in block longer than he should have, so a lot of times you try to make it where 
there's still the same amount of block advantage, so the attacker will get out at the same time as the defender, but but we want to make sure that you just didn't feel like you were stuck in block. And there was, there was a lot of those, like Kodos, like Sword Sweep was one where you felt like you were, you were stuck there forever, where now both of them recover a little bit quicker, just to make the pacing the game feel a little bit faster. Okay. And um, there were a lot of EX moves that would leave you at double-digit double block advantage, like plus 12 on block, or there were some normal attacks that would leave you at plus 10 on block or something like that, and they've been slightly scaled down, yeah. which you'll see throughout the patch notes. Like maybe something that used to be plus 10, might only be plus four now or something. Yeah, and some other ones uh, to the reverse got better. Where there was some, right. there were some well, like armor moves before where before there was there wasn't really a reason to use them. Now some of those are more plus on block. Excellent. Awesome. Okay, so here's how we're going to work through this. We have a bunch of character matchups we're going to go through. Now keep in mind there are three variations per character. We literally can't do everything, so we're going to show some of the the stuff that's easier to see. Now your characters are still are still going to get some things that will help your character or. So in some places hurt your character, but you don't have to read those in the patch notes. We're going to show you the stuff that's very easy to kind of go through and see. And the first matchup we have selected is Tarkatan Alien, Ooh. as the as the cheers erupt from yeah! the chat, uh, versus Patrick Kung Lao. So let's uh, talk about what we're going to show here with Alien. Let's start with Alien. Well, the first thing is we normalize the tail flip. It is now minus 10 on block for the regular one. Oh, I can so hear people cheering. You can get a punch. I can actually hear it. And the, the hitbox of it has been adjusted to not be the whole tail. You kind of have to hit it with your feet. You can see. And that applies to the air one. And then the EX one is made minus 28, I believe. So it's a, it's going to be a little bit easier to punish. Sometimes in tournament, it was kind of hard to punish, even though it was always punishable. Now, there's no excuse not to get the punish. And uh, like a lot of the armored launchers, it does not have armor, the EX one. It's still an overhead, so it's still a great move. But uh, he'll have to use his other armor moves if you want to, you know, get out of pressure. Okay, great. And uh, like Tarkatan, for example, the uh, his uh, enhanced uh, chop chop move, that one is two its armor. So for like certain setups, like Tony and stuff, like the alien where he won't be able to get up, if you pick Tarkatan the alien, he's got a unique uh, two hit armor special move. So there'll be a reason to pick that variation. And we're going to see that a lot through a lot of the characters. Yeah. And this is a perfect example of a move that previously was kind of redundant. Like, why would you not do the EX tail flip? It's now split across where you do the tail flip if you want the overhead and the range. You do chop chop shop if you want, you know, to get off to get off me, okay. stop the pressure thing. So it's just expanding their move list, kind of giving each thing a different reason to be used. I have something also uh, a slower forward four. Yes, the forward four is a couple of frames slower, and the hit advantage on some of his special moves has changed. Like his pounce, I think it's now. Uh, I don't know. So you don't need to get the exact numbers, Steve. Except we're not going to give a lot of numbers. The tail, flip, get uh, the tail flip up. A couple of his moves had obscene amount of hit advantage before. Like, he could really run up and start doing his pressure. And it's now been slightly normalized. Yeah, it's more on par with Rusty characters. Right. Awesome. The, the records as well. The Rekkas, a big change is you can no longer delay the regular series of moves. You have to just do them, you know, one, two, three. And there's no delay at all. He still has the guessing game at the end between the grab, the low, and the overhead, but you can no longer do only two hits and then jump over them, or only do one hit and staggering it. If he wants to delay, he has to EX it. Yeah, and, okay. the, and the enhanced one can still be delayed, so okay. it still has the advantage and stuff. Gotcha. Awesome. Let's discuss... Kong Lao! Well, there's an acidic change, too. Oh, okay. Uh, the dot damage on acidic has been adjusted. Like, yeah, some of it was um, there was there were a uh, couple of the moves that were stacking the dot um, more than it should have. So those are stacking it more on par with everything else. So you'll see less damage overall, but it still does stack and it still does do a decent amount of damage. Okay. It's just a matter of not overly stacking like it was. And the self cut when he cut himself, it used to only do one percent to him. It now does three for the regular and the X. So his self cut is still a great move, especially when you're in the corner. But now it's going to hurt him a little bit more than it did before. Now it's something you actually probably need to think about because it'll let you know if you do two cuts that's six percent he's hurt himself yeah I, I tried to petition to make the ex do 50 percent and paula was not happy that would so. a little too be much. extreme yeah. that's why i don't balance your design names everybody <laughs> uh kung lao uh, we're gonna do hat trick a lot of people uh a lot of to kind of learn more about hat trick a lot of people ask for buffs for hat trick so what we got going on um a lot of it was just uh cleaning up the um the speed and hitboxes and a lot of the uh, hat calls so now it'll they come back at a consistent speed, and the, and the speed which is, which he recovers from the opponent is the same. So that should make a lot of the combos a lot easier to do. You won't have to do as much as like improv on the spot. It'll it'll generally make 
getting combos off, whenever you do uh, successfully hit somebody with the hat trick throw, you can get your combo more consistently now. Awesome, okay, great. Um, and then Kung Lao's um, his the enhanced teleport is a lot quicker, and uh, it's it's his uh, it's his current like only armor move in most of the variations. So like right now, there's no more armor on the EX spin because that's one of the fastest moves in the game. But but the uh, enhanced teleport has armor on it, and um, that move is actually very quick now. Um, and and because of the uh, delayed wake up and other adjustments, it's a lot easier to get off now. And then um, we also open up the window on uh, the down up moves so that the uh, info window is a little bigger. So that should make his and Goro's a little easier to do also. Awesome. Another thing about Kung Lao is uh, Polo went through a lot of his normal attacks that were kind of slow or the reward wasn't that great on hit or they were punishable and uh, really like clean them up. Like his 4, 2, 1, down 1, all three hits are now safe so that'll be a great, great stagger string. His back 1 is now 7 frames startup but it's a high but the, the whole string now comes out a lot faster. His 4, 3, down 3 has changed on hit and block. I think the last hit's now advantage, but uh, it's a high now. So his uh, his offense should be a lot more interesting. There should be like three or four new moves that you can really use that weren't really that useful before that have now opened up. Yeah, awesome. And because of a lot of the armor changes, there were a lot of strings that because they had gaps in the stuff, people didn't want to use them a lot. But a lot of those gaps now are aren't, aren't as much a disadvantage to you. So it'll be a lot more used to use some of those strings. Awesome. And it'll be more of a guessing game with guy whether or not he wants to use. His arm to get through it or back dash or just why. Okay. So uh, a couple fan favorites. Let's try out a uh, demolition Sonia and Bayless oh, Kenshi and Buzzsaw. Um, all the Buzzsaws now do a little bit more damage, and the EX overhead one now hits overhead when it comes down. Awesome. Yeah, and it's generally easier to combo if you get somebody with like um, if you throw an upward Buzzsaw and they, they jump into it, or if they if they get hit airborne out of a regular Buzzsaw, you can actually get that kick more easily now. To be able to like improv combos with Buzzsaw just by trying to zone somebody out. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, moving on to uh, Sonya. Demo Sonya. Sonya Blade. Balanced Kenshi. Yeah, we saw a uh, diff of the balanced Kenshi we changes. We did. Awesome. So, Sonya, Demolition Sonya is a good example of, I think, uh, of a philosophy to tone down offense just a notch or two. Uh, in this regard, it would be to. Uh, the reward. So now she can only use one of each type of grenade in a combo. So you can use a stun grenade and then you are disabled from using another stun grenade in the same combo. But you can still use... Oh, you can still have negative edge on and get that. <laughs> you can use the explosive rocket to get a second rocket in your combo. And you mean rocket or grenade? We've changed all grenades oh, to rockets. <laughs> That's now, it. Rocket. <laughs> yeah, so the actual overall damage she gets isn't that much isn't that much lower. It's just a matter of the other guy's not gonna be stuck in the 20 second combo. Right. So uh, we wanna make sure that uh, you just weren't stuck in super long combos where the damage you still get is pretty comparable. It's a little bit lower, but but a lot of it she still has the the getting the grenades out, um, going to a higher low with a lot of her stuff. Um, and with, with grenades out, that's that's the general game plan. But we just wanted to tone down the overall just combos that were doing a little bit of too much damage, and also they just took too long. Right. Right. So it's it's a good example of the philosophy of not completely changing the way she plays, but just making it just a, a notch less good reward. The other thing is her back one is now significant significantly slower. It now starts at 19 frames, and the gap between back one and four is now bigger. So previously the idea was you could armor through. But like at max range or in the heat of battle, it was very, very difficult to armor through that gap. It's now going to be a little bit easier. So you can kind of see that you block the back one and then do a reversal to counter the back one four. Cool. Yeah, let Paula play too. Come on. I'm going to run through some uh, some Kenshi changes with the, the balanced variety. Um, yeah, so in balance, the uh, shoulder charge is um, it's safer on block, especially from like medium and, 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 um, and like a little bit this is out. The EX shoulder charge is, is, is actually advantage on block, so you can use it as sort of a loop to, to enter strings into that when the guy's blocking, and then and then sort of get away or choose to apply more pressure. Um, his overhead slash um, will now do a, uh, juggle the guy up for a combo, so whether or not you can do it up close in strings, or if you're just sitting back and um, keeping the guy away with shoulder charges, drop your overhead on him, you drop an enhanced one, you're gonna get some damage, so you can mix that with the teleflurry. And so it just general it, it just lets him do a, uh, a little bit more damage and improve some of his keep away game. Okay. Right, because previously the idea is the Kenshi players would like to zone you with the teleflurry, but then the trick to that is you can duck it. So then you do the overhead slash, but the reward wasn't that great. So then you do the shoulder, 
but on block that's punishable. Now the EX shoulder will actually be advantaged so you can press it, and then the reward for the overhead strike is a pretty decent amount of damage because now it's in combo. And that also helps him up close because in the video we showed he just did the teleflurry for 19%. Up close you can do a full juicy combo with that EX overhead. Yeah, you can, you can run up forward too, so you can actually convert some decent damage from around mid-screen or, or closer. Have you seen some PPJ swag on yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Kenshi is one of the higher damaging characters in the game. And uh, he also, like Kung Lao, a lot of his normals were kind of switched around. I think his, uh, is it his back two? Now recovers better. His forward four is now more advantage on block by a little bit. Uh, his EX Rising Karma is now safe on block, but it no longer has the power. Yeah, it just generally lets you just, so, just sort of like play your game, and then and then he'll, he'll still rely on on, on, on meters, uh, but just it's just figuring out where, where to spend your meter, as opposed to just throwing that out and trying to reversal something. Cool. Um, so that covers all the new moves that are plus on block. Oh, uh, there's probably more to come. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh sorry. Not to come. sorry guys, sorry guys. Uh, and is there any other variation changes to either of these characters that you guys kind of want to go over, like combat yeah, uh, stuff like that? In Kenjutsu, the EX Sword, the down back one, the sword uppercut move, mm -hmm. no longer has armor, like most of the armored pop-ups. But, the big change is, it's now safe on block, it's minus seven. Which means, if you choose to use the bar, Kenshi has a safe on block 50-50 launcher, because you can do 4-2 in the EX Sword. But, he has to use the resources, so it's kind of the, the, the gambit between, do I think you're not going to block correctly, I'm going to use the bar, or not. And then, um... His armored push now has two hits of armor. Okay. So you can see, that's just another example you'll see in the patch notes come out where some armor has been removed, but like Paulo said, uh, some of the armor moves that weren't that great before have been buffed. Awesome. Cool. All right. So let's move on. Uh, this is going for you, and you'll enjoy this one. Royal Storm Katana and Cryomancer Sub-Zero. Now, a lot of you saw in our, our GIF situation mm -hmm. that Cryomancer now has a command drive. Is this the truth? That GIF was about a second long. How would you figure that out? Well, everyone on... I didn't actually see a grab. Oh, no, it, it is. Oh! Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. A lot of people think they know exactly what happens and why he's now the best character in the game. Right. Yes. <laughs> so. I'm, I'm pretty sure a lot of people saw those GIFs and they knew exactly how what all the changes were. Okay. So now with Cryomancer, if you go to do the uh, the string you had before it went to grab, it'll do the same one as the other variations. And the grab that used to be in there is actually now a standalone special move. And from there, you can go into the other special. So if you have bar, um, you can go and you can see some combos. Overall, that move does less damage by itself, so it's not super damaging, but it's just a matter of being able to mix in that grab with the stuff makes the Cryomancer his most offensive variation, which which is what it, what it was always intended to be. Um, and, it, and it's got a few like uh, tick throw setups and stuff in there. So it's generally meant to be Cryomancer is the get in your face of zero, whereas the like Unbreakables will run away with the clone. Um, sort of differentiates the two, and it gives reason to play the other two variations. And to complement that, his forward one string has also been changed. Yeah, it's a little quicker. Um, so it's, so it's, still, it's a little quicker of like a, a faster mid. Um, to use the train, um, and then from, from the forward one, two, you can actually take throw off of that. And there's down one and uh, down three, you've gotten a little better, too. Awesome. And uh, in Unbreakable, the parry has now had a, a significant recovery buff. It now recovers a lot faster, especially the EX1. Yeah, the EX1 covers, um, um, I believe it was, only like, it was only like five frames of recovery afterwards, so it's actually very hard to punish that one. Yeah. And the same thing with the regular one, so you can sort of just throw out the parry now a lot more often. And, and, um, and because of um, uh, changes with armor, when he has the aura up, he still keeps the enhanced slide having armor, and it still ends up being a launcher. So it's one of the few examples in the game where there still is an armored launcher, but it's, it's in uh, Unbreakable Sub-Zero, and it's only when it's the aura up. And I think that's a good example of what Ed was saying, where... Uh, you know, Paula wanted to be careful about buffing some of the mid-tier or the lesser-used characters because when you bring the top tier down or when you change the mechanics of the game, what used to be average becomes exceptional. So Sub-Zero, when he had the buff up, the slide launching you, that was kind of a neat trick before. It was kind of a fun gimmick. That is now one of the only armored launchers in the game. So that's like a, what, 10-frame or 9-frame armored launcher. So that's now one of the best armored moves in the game. Not because we changed it, but because we left it the same. Yeah. So that's like a key example of that. Okay. I got a, I got a friend named Tan that and no matter what we tweet, he will respond, buff unbreakable. It could be like, hey, have a great day. Mm -hmm. Hey, buff unbreakable. So now he actually, we, we've got some good changes in there for him as well. In my opinion, whiffed counter, the EX counter, is now a legit strategy that I would use in <laughs> tournament if I played Sub-Zero. I would do it. Awesome. Speaking of somebody you did play in tournament, 
<laughs> uh, Katana, her back two is sped up to be 18 frames instead of 25. It still only does a little damage and knocks you down, so it's you know it's not the greatest overhead in the world, but it's probably unreactable now, so that's a really nice buff for her. Uh, off her float, she can do angle jump in, like she can do forward, jump in, punch, and back, which is kind of the same thing we did for Shinnok. And, uh, someone else got that. Kenshi. Kenshi, Kenshi right. So that puts it in line with that. Um, her throat slit EX is now actually safe on block, now it's more pushback. A lot of pushback. I think it's minus nine or something like that now. So um, it's kind of a, a low risk, low reward armor move. Um, another change is there's more pushback on this, so it's better as a zoning tool. And her fans do 1% more damage. But then the big thing is uh, she can no longer combo off her EX Rising fan normally. She can't just do a special move. She can only do an EX move. So we've added an EX Air Fan and an EX Float. The Princess Flutter. And that'll let her use it. So the idea is she's one of the few characters in the game that will have an armored launcher, but she has to use two bars to do it. So she has new moves. Essentially, yeah. yeah. New, sort and, of. And, and those two enhanced moves only come out out of the float. So they're not moves you do generally. Right. Just like from, the, from, the, uh, from the uppercut, you can then go into the enhanced float or the enhanced uh, air fan toss. So that's cool. big. Yeah, it's a big deal because that's exactly what I was just saying, where that's now exceptional. Even though she has to use bars, that's still a great, great defensive tool. So her zoning is a little bit better. Her footsies are a little bit better because of the range, you know, the pushback on the lift. And now her defense is better with safer armor and then the ability to use two bars to get a combo. Awesome. And uh, the, the additional damage also applies to Morphle. The Glaive Dow does uh, extra damage too. And she can do the EX Glaive from uh, the Rising Fans as well. Cool. Excellent. We want to take a quick break to handle a technical issue real quickly. To hit the starting suit screen for me there, Jen. We'll be back in about probably two minutes.